The Seoul Auto Exhibition was vibrant with dozens of people inside, showcasing luxurious supercars and captivating car models. The enthusiastic staff joyfully welcomed customers. As he entered the exhibition, he looked around and commented, It's indeed a large auto show. Chairman Choi is quite shrewd. I came to pick up my car, and he conveniently treats his cars as display items. Many high-end cars are still unnamed. By the way, this is my first time attending a car exhibition. Observing the surroundings, his gaze collided with those of the foreigners, exuding an aura of wealth. Oh my, there are quite a few foreigners here, he remarked. The famous foreigners were announced, Mr. Stephen, the boss, is here. He turned to eavesdrop, and three figures entered. The head figure was Boss Stephen, a charming lady with rounded hills, named Choi Hai Ji, and the confused guy next to her was Su Bin. Su Bin approached Ji Ji. Ji Ji, are you thirsty? Let me get you some water. Ji Ji, indifferent, replied, not thirsty. Su Bin persisted. All right, are you hungry then? Let me get you some food. Not hungry either. On the other side, Boss Stephen was warmly welcomed by the two servers. Boss Stephen, today's business is not bad. Sales are going well. Another server brought Coca-Cola to offer to Boss Stephen, who declined, saying, no, thanks. While feeling thirsty, he smiled and waved at the server, saying, give me a glass of cola. He enjoyed the Coca-Cola refreshingly, exclaiming, refreshing. I didn't expect the car exhibition to offer food and drinks. He continued to enjoy his meal, oblivious to the disdainful look from the server, who perhaps looked down on him for being less affluent. Suddenly, his eyes collided with a free ice cream counter. Wow, there's free ice cream, and it's Haven Das. It's sold for 30 yuan per small box outside, unexpectedly so generous in here. Approaching, he smiled and said, Beautiful lady, one ice cream, please. Upon hearing this, a server smiled apologetically. Sorry, all the ice cream has been given out. The other server next to her, not fond of him, turned away to another area, muttering, this poor and ugly guy came to the exhibition. Hearing that, he just rubbed his head and walked away, saying, Oh, it would have been better if I came a bit earlier. After he left, Boss Stephen approached. Is there any ice cream left? Seeing that he was a wealthy foreigner, the two servers immediately greeted him with a smile, presenting a box of ice cream. Yes, there is. Please enjoy it slowly, sir. After Boss Stephen enjoyed his ice cream and left, three girls approached the ice cream counter. Wow, it's Haven Das, give me a portion. However, the two servers refused once again, saying, Sorry, miss, it's all gone. Hearing this, the three girls walked away with a slightly regretful expression. Too bad. The two servers behind the counter share a mocking smile, unable to tolerate such discrimination. He stepped forward, saying, Wait a minute. His voice was loud enough to startle the server and the girls nearby, leaving everyone stunned. His face showed a hint of anger, directed towards the girls from earlier. They told me and these three girls that the ice cream is finished. The foreigner just now claimed there was still some. What kind of person is she to have this ice cream reserved? The girls behind overheard and looked towards him. Then they glanced around, and one of them discovered, Oh, there's something going on here. Did you see those two foreigners? They both have ice cream. What's happening? The two servers wore a diplomatic smile. Sorry, there's a limited quantity each day, only provided to a few special customers, they said. Though they uttered these words, in their hearts, they cursed everyone for being the nuisance. Truly, their words were different from their thoughts. He looked at the smirking server and sarcastically remarked, Special customers, only those from abroad, right? Hearing this, the server's face turned dark with anger, glaring at him. He persisted, Do you still have any ice cream for us? It's embarrassing to have missed the last batch earlier. I don't believe you've run out. I bet you could open the box to show me. The commotion on his side caught the attention of those nearby. Boss Stephen inquired, Who's causing trouble in my exhibition area? Su Bin, upon hearing this, hurriedly tried to pacify. Mr. Stephen, it's these foreigners causing a disturbance. I'll handle it. GG, on the side, remained absorbed in her phone, indifferent to the commotion around her. Su Bin left but not without waving a farewell to G.G. G.G., even your brother's business, how Chairman Choi influences it. Don't worry, you have me here. G.G.I. remained indifferent, focusing on the phone, silently cursing. 
This Su Bin is such a bother. If it weren't for his collaboration with my brother, I really wouldn't want to pay attention to him. Su Bin approached the group, asking, Hey, what's all the fuss about? The two serving girls explained in unison, Su, it's under your responsibility. He clarified, Huh, so I'm in charge here, right on time. These two servers only give ice cream to foreigners. Local people don't get the privilege. Su Bin moved closer, mocking. Is there a problem? Foreigners have money. What about you? He looked down on him disdainfully. People who come to car exhibitions freeload, drink, and eat for free. Just like you. Don't cause trouble here. Hearing this, he responded candidly. You've disappointed me. I came here to pick up my car. Upon his words, the two serving girls and Su Bin burst into laughter. Ha ha, hee hee. Perplexed, he questioned. What's so funny? Su Bin and the serving girl looked at him with a mocking gaze. A guy who's both poor and ugly like you. Claiming to buy a car worth 60,000 TWD. Can't even tell a convincing lie. In the Seoul Auto Show, there's no car price lower than 100,000 TWD. Understand? This guy was indeed ugly, so much that it made dogs close their eyes in sympathy. While calling him poor might be acceptable, labeling him as ugly was beyond tolerable. To call them ugly when he looked like this was an insult even to dogs. People around started discussing. What's happening over there? This guy seems to be both poor and ugly, sneaking in here, eating and drinking while causing trouble. What audacity. Kick him out quickly. Su Bin approached him even closer, saying, What are you pretending for? Your face is so thick. The people around kept mocking his poverty, so he helplessly took out a card from his pocket, finally found it. Chairman Choi gave this to me this morning. He pulled out a black VIP card, raising it high for everyone to see. The crowd that was gossiping earlier was now stunned. I can't be mistaken, right? This is a VIP card from Big Bang. Only five of them are given out at the Jangnan Auto Show. The VIP card from Big Bang. Someone who has spent over a million at the auto show and has a net worth of at least a billion is the only one qualified to possess. He held the card in his hand. At this moment, his gaze seemed to be looking down on ordinary people. Finally, he could pause and listen to what others had to say, right? Indeed, you could only have a conversation if you had money. The two serving girls who were handing out ice cream earlier now became timid, continuously bowing and apologizing. I'm sorry. We were wrong. We didn't know you were. Before she could finish her sentence, he interrupted. Did you make a mistake? The person you should apologize to is not just me but all the Chinese people at this auto show. The cause of this issue is these foreign-born girls, with no relation to whether I can afford a car or not. The girls behind him felt it was right to speak up. That's right. Ice cream is just a small matter. Do you think we really care about a small tub of ice cream? What we noticed was that you knelt for too long and didn't learn how to stand up properly. People around cheered and applauded. Well said, little sister is really awesome. The car boss should give us a reasonable explanation. He turned to the girl talking. Little sister, you're really cool. Like for you. Seeing the blushing girl, it was clear he wasn't just casually flirting. Su Bin was sweating bullets, gritting his teeth in frustration. Suddenly, Gigi appeared out of nowhere. Without hesitation, she rushed towards him. Mr. Kim Taehyung. Still bewildered, he looked down at Gigi. You are. Blushing. Gigi looked up. Mr. Kim Taehyung. Why did you come without any notice? You are an important guest. Please wait a moment. When the ribbon is cut, you must stand in the center. He's still confused, responded. What? GJ pressed closer to him. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Choi Hai Ji, the younger sister of Chairman Choi. I always listen to my brother talking about you. I really admire you. He still bewildered, said, Um, hello. I didn't expect Chairman Choi to have such a lovely sister. Su Bin's face turned pale. GG. Who is this person? Suddenly, you run over and take Hai Ji away. Gigi looked at Su Bin. Hey, Su Bin. These two are from Steven's car business. How should we resolve this matter? I don't need to say, right? Su Bin was bewildered. It's troublesome. I didn't expect it to cause such a big commotion. To avoid affecting my business, I can only. Su Bin pointed directly at the two female employees. These two are temporary employees. They did this on their own. I am also extremely angry about it, 
Stevens Car Business will immediately remove these two to express our attitude. The two service girls spoke up, Sue, this is not our fault. However, Sue Bin ignored his loud scolding. Shut up. People around couldn't help but discuss. If they can hear, that's enough. These two are already very suspicious. GG stepped forward, holding his hand. Wait a minute, is demotion the only consequence? The nearby service girl, a bit frightened, stuttered. What do you want, Mr. Kim Taegyung? Do you need me to call security and give them a beating for you? But he didn't care. No need to pay attention to them. Gigi looked down at the two service girls. Consider yourselves lucky. Chairman Jian generously forgives you. Now, get lost. The two girls quickly bowed and thanked profusely. Thank you. Thank you. After that, they hurriedly left the car exhibition. However, one of them stumbled and fell to the ground due to their haste. The two girls became the laughingstock of the exhibition, with people around continuously mocking. Ha 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 ha. The crowd was buzzing. Who is Chairman Jian? I'd never heard of him. But how come Chairman Choi's sister actively sticks to a man she just met for the first time? You don't know how your goddess took the initiative. Every word from the people around made Su Bin stand angrily in a corner. He gritted his teeth, shivering uncontrollably. So it's him. He humiliated me on the live stream before, and now he's snatching Choi Hai Ji. Tae Young and Ji Ji stood in the midst of the crowd, where everyone constantly leaned in to chat. Tae Young wanted to rely on a large, sturdy tree nearby. Miss Hai Ji, you just mentioned that this guy is Chairman Jion. This is Chairman Jion, who spent tens of billions on that live stream platform. Any room for pretending? I've admired Chairman Jion for a long time. I'm from the Jion BM Consumption Company, and I am. Su Bin approached Stephen, bowing with a respectful attitude. Mr. Stephen, I'm truly sorry. Originally, this matter was easy to resolve. But unexpectedly, the other person is Chairman Jion a recently famous second-generation rich kid who flaunts his money and likes to cause trouble everywhere. Definitely a social delinquent. This scoundrel clearly wanted to tarnish Ta Young's image in Stephen's eyes. He pointed at Ta Young. This time, he definitely intended to cause trouble, affecting our booming luxury car consumption business. Hearing this, Stephen agreed. All right, I'll handle them. Stephen approached Ta Young, and in a loud voice, he called out, Chairman Jeon Wright, Stephen crossed his arms with a slightly uncomfortable and angry expression. I'm Stephen. I heard Chairman Jeon is extremely wealthy, spending money like water. Why do I feel it's a bit fake? I smell the scent of a Ponzi scheme around here. Hearing Stephen's words, Taehyung scratched his head in confusion and asked again, Ha! Huh, what is a Ponzi scheme? Seeing that Taehyung didn't understand at all, Stephen didn't know what else to say. GG stepped forward and whispered to Taehyung to explain. Mr. Kim Taehyung, a Ponzi scheme is a fraud originating from abroad. Basically, it's an empty-handed wolf in sheep's clothing, deceiving investors. Hearing that, Taehyung just smirked mockingly. So it's the invention of you foreigners. Stephen, enraged, pointed directly at Taehyung's face. The biggest characteristic of a Ponzi scheme is that the scammer is very cunning always present in the upper class and acts very generously. The main purpose is to deceive as many wealthy people as possible to invest. This is not something you always do. Hearing him say that, the people around couldn't help but be amazed. It seems quite accurate. Many times looking for him to invest. Turns out Chairman Jian is a truly frightening scammer. I was almost swindled. GG stepped forward to break the encirclement for Tae Young. Mr. Stephen, do you have any evidence? If not, Please don't accuse Mr. Kim Taehyung. Stephen had no evidence, but he liked to talk without proof, saying, So does he have evidence to prove that he is not a scammer? Taehyung didn't care, turned away, yawned, and showed an attitude of dissatisfaction, not bothering to acknowledge him. This is boring. I'm getting sleepy. Going to grab a drink to wake up. Hearing him say that, the man behind could only stand gaping, knowing he couldn't do anything to Taehyung. So Stephen turned to point directly at the girl from earlier. These three girls are your accomplices, cooperating with each other. The girl, angered, spoke out without thinking. You? You shut up. Stephen approached the girl, eyes wide open, and threatened. If you don't honestly confess, I'll call security. Taehyung couldn't endure it any longer. So he slowly stepped forward. Stephen, isn't it? He challenged. 
Congratulations on successfully provoking me. Let me play with you. Gigi also stood up for him from behind. Can't do anything. Mr. Kim Tae-young. And you resort to bullying someone else's daughter. Truly despicable. Stephen applauded, his face showing a bit of satisfaction. Why run away? It's very simple. Just prove that you have more money than me, and I'll believe you. But if you lose, you have to publicly announce to the entire city that you're a scammer. Gigi couldn't bear to hear any more, but didn't know what else to say, sir. People, upon hearing about this bet, couldn't help but find it amusing, discussing, and buzzing around. Mr. Stephen is one of the top car agents of Vin Group. He came to Seoul to advertise the new VinFast car brand, and he's being overly oppressive. This pretentious rich guy can't possibly have more money than Mr. Stephen. Tae Young stepped forward, raising a challenging finger. Okay, okay, let's play it that way. If you lose, you have to publicly announce to the entire city of Seoul that you're a businessman who bullies small businesses. Are you up for it? Hearing this, Stephen widened his eyes, pointing at the man on the other side. Arrogant brat, I will make you fail miserably. Hey, the guy across the street, I'll give you a car worth a billion. Hearing that, the man was overjoyed, really? Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Stephen approached Taehyung with a challenging face. President John. Do you dare? What do you have if you don't dare? Apart from money, you have nothing. GG, angry, stepped forward and shouted, This is unfair. You're the CEO. These cars belong to you. Stephen raised his hand and declared to the surrounding crowd, These cars, indeed, are the ones I spent money to buy. Is there any problem, or President John doesn't have the money to buy them? GG also didn't know what to say, sir. After that, she could only fall silent. Taehyung raised his hand to comfortingly pat Gigi's head. It's okay, hi G. Accepting the challenge, Taehyung raised his hand toward the three girls. The two billion supercar, not bad for President Choi's exhibition. Each of these three girls gets one as compensation for the oppression they faced. And so each of those three girls got a two billion car, adding up to a total of six billion yuan, spent on shopping. The people around couldn't believe their eyes. Everyone exclaimed, oh my. It's real. He paid it all directly and didn't even change his expression. Doubting President Jun's resources. It's unbelievable. I've never doubted it before. The three girls approached, thanking Taehyung. Heavens. Thank you, President Jun. This gift is too precious. We don't know how to express our gratitude. Taehyung heard that and casually said, No need to keep it in your heart. It's just a game. We can't afford to lose to that foreign guy. GG, happily, got closer to Taehyung. Kim Taehyung, you're really cool. I know you're not an ordinary person. And so, the two of them continued to spend money like water. Taehyung shouted, spending like this. Let's see how many cars you can buy. I'll give a 1 billion car to the person across the street. Do you dare to give away for free? Subtracting 1 billion 200 million, 2 billion 500 million continuously this one, then that one, and that one. The amount continuously increased to 1 billion 500 million, 3 billion 600 million, 3 billion 200 million. Su Bin approached him and whispered, Mr. Stephen, we've given away everything from 1 billion and above, except for the two at the beginning. It's already happened. We've truly given everything to the person across the street. We've incurred a loss of a few billion. Hearing that, he couldn't believe his eyes, and his words trembled a bit. How can he give away cars worth twice? or three times mine every time, and even pay it all. Does his money never run out? Tae Young stepped forward, teasingly rubbing his chin. Mr. Stephen, did you run out because the cars are all gone, or did the money on the card run out? These words touched his pride. He stepped forward, touching a second expensive car in the exhibition. Before, before were just small battles. I admit this scammer tricked a considerable amount of money. You can spend extravagantly like this. But I'll give you a globally limited Lamborghini LP74, valued at 4 billion. Money can't buy it. How do you plan to compare now? Though he spoke boldly, his heart was truly bleeding, regretting the loss. Taehyung, upon hearing this, looked around and remarked, Oh, is that so? Stephen stepped forward. What's the matter? Want to back out? If you can't find a high-end limited edition car, consider yourself defeated. Hearing this, Gigi angrily shouted, Stephen, you're going too far. Kim Taehyung spent more money than you, and now you want to change the rules. 
He shamelessly changed the rules. He only needs to offer a price similar to mine. If he likes to spend more, what does it have to do with me? GG, not knowing what to say could only curse two words. Shameless. The people around seem to follow the prevailing wind. Money may buy people, but it won't erase the truth. Quickly find an authorized agency to investigate him. Right, President Jian has lost the game. No need to compare anymore. Immediately expose the scam. He approached the most luxurious car on display, asking, Is this the limited edition? The girl, surprised, replied, That's the idealized Rolls Royce. He playfully rubbed his head. This is just for exhibition, not for sale. If you want it, break your legs and take it. He turned to the man with a serious look. Thank you for teaching me to sing. A dog jumps over the wall. Can you explain its meaning? Hearing this, the man burst into tears of laughter. The drama has ended. You should kneel down and admit you're a scammer, President Jun. Many people are watching. No need to pretend. Just as he spoke, Chairman Choi rushed in with an excited face. President Jun is here. Why didn't you inform me so I could come and welcome you, Chairman Choi? Chairman Choi approached, shaking hands with him, a flattering expression on his face. This is the Rolls Royce you ordered, sir, placed at the exhibition to attract visitors without your consent. I hope you don't mind. Would you like to test the car now? Chairman Choi's words infuriated the man. People around couldn't believe their ears. What? Chairman Choi is not mistaken. This is his car. How could it be? He walked closer to GG, words dripping sweetness into her ears. No need to test anymore. I believe you can sweat your card. I'm giving this car to Choi Hai Ji. GG blushed at his words, her heart pounding incessantly. Do you like him? The announcement from the cash swipe machine echoed. Payment successful. 800 million collected. Hearing this, Stephen couldn't believe his eyes. He was in disbelief, bloodshot eyes, ears, and mouth, a slightly panicked expression on his face. What? People around widened their eyes, everyone holding their heads in disbelief. Stephen's car, compared to this one, is like straw. 800 million is more expensive than Stephen's limited edition. What's even more astonishing is that this new car is given as a gift. If someone gives me a car like this, I would willingly call him my father. On this side, Gigi was so happy that she kissed him on the cheek. Chairman Choi stood behind, scratching his head in bewilderment. John, President John, is this true? Are you really giving it to my sister? Gigi looked at him with a surprise and admiring gaze. Kim Tae Young, you're really kind. Stephen approached him, bowed slightly, his voice hoarse. Mr. Stephen, what else do you want to compete with? At this point, he couldn't say anything more, just mumbled, I, I admit defeat. He chuckled, embracing GG in his arms. Well, in that case, it's a game with consequences. Speed up a bit. Stephen furrowed his brow, beads of sweat forming, his entire body trembling. He self-reproached, I was wrong. This guy isn't a scammer. He genuinely has money, spends extravagantly, and doesn't even bother to blink an eye. I can't fathom how formidable the situation behind him is. It's frightening. In the midst of a dense crowd, Stephen, facing Young, exclaimed loudly, I was wrong. I dared to doubt President John's identity. Seeing that he hadn't grabbed the spotlight yet, Young spoke loudly, to get to the point, I am a morally corrupted capitalist. Seeing China as an easy target, I intentionally make money from the people. I am shameless. This old man was brutally honest, and the surrounding people cheered. This foreigner, pay up. Support domestic products. Never buy Vin fast cars again. Seeing that he had genuinely changed his heart, Young let it slide. He waved his hand signaling, All right, get lost. Yes. He was chased by a group of people, cursed and scolded. Don't think you can escape so easily. Catch him. This manager is also an obedient dog, returning all the cars and still having to make him compensate for the multiplied mental losses. He ran while shouting, Don't come here. After the crowd dispersed, there was still a group of people surrounding him, and GG, continuously praising. Thanks to President John for helping us see the true face of that foreigner. President John, do you lack jewelry? You're so cool. You helped us vent our anger. At this moment, his phone also rang. He took it out and answered, Hello. On the other side, GG was thinking about something. Kim Taehyung has a real charm. Although it's our first meeting, I really want. 
What does she want? GG, with her loving gaze, turned to Taehyung. Kim Taehyung, I want to date you. But before she could finish her sentence, she noticed he was no longer beside her. Where did he go? Seeing her like that, the people kindly pointed. Heat on the phone, ran over to the other direction, unable to express any words to him and unable to invite him for a meal. Gigi angrily stepped forward and punched President Choi in the face, hitting his body. Oh, with such a good opportunity just now, I shouldn't have hesitated. It's infuriating. President Choi, confused by the attack, asked, Why are you hitting me? Meanwhile, Taehyung was standing outside the exhibition area, waiting for someone. Unexpectedly, the person he was waiting for turned out to be Yang Yoon, who waved at him. President Jeon is here. He cheerfully and playfully responded. Yang Yoon, you look even more beautiful after just a few days without seeing each other. Hearing this, Yang Yoon blushed and felt happy. Really, it's strange. When other men compliment me, I find it repulsive. But when President Jeon compliments me, it brings a bit of joy. Liking someone. What else can you say? The favorability rating increased by another 2%. He approached her, scratching his head. It's a bit embarrassing. The university requires us fourth-year students to intern. Just bothering you to help me find a company, not a big deal. Others may think that President John, with so much money, doesn't need to earn a few internship credits. But I understand you. You must be like me, not agreeing to take over the family business and wanting to build a new career on your own. That's why you're interning, to gain experience. Seeing her talk about so many unrelated things, but he cheerfully brushed it off. Exactly, exactly, exactly. The main thing is that if you lack a few points, you won't graduate, but it makes people think you're long-winded. The two of them continued their conversation in the car. President John, I've arranged a position for you as a director, with a monthly salary of 600000 plus a 5 million annual bonus. Hearing this, he declined, no, no, lower it. Being an employee with a 5,000 monthly salary is enough. All right, that's the true President John. Meanwhile, in a tall skyscraper building, people in the company were discussing the new employee. Have you heard? Among the new employees who arrived today, one was arranged by the CEO. Oh, we must take advantage and strengthen our relationship. Maybe there's a chance for promotion in the future. Hopefully, he's a handsome guy. While chatting happily, a girl appeared. The boss is here. Quickly get back to your positions. This girl was Su Min, the team leader. She ordered everyone, but in her heart, she felt a bit dissatisfied. A bunch of ugly people daydreaming in broad daylight. What am I doing here with these people? In the distance, two people whispered, Did you see Su Min today, dressed especially hot? It seems like this Su Min girl is also trying to attract some men. The director led the two newcomers in to introduce them to everyone in the company, saying, Attention, everyone. These two are our new colleagues. Why don't you introduce yourselves? One guy, flaunting his style, ran his fingers through his hair and proudly showed off his luxury watch. Hello, everyone. I'm Park Kim Bin. The other guy introduced himself as well. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Young, a fourth-year student at Seoul University. Seeing this, Su Min the girl burst into laughter. One is a poor student, and the other is someone with a Rolex. Just by looking, you can tell Park Kim Bin is the one arranged by the CEO. This girl really has an expressive face. Park Hyun Bin glanced at the director. Rest assured, son. The only one getting officially promoted this month is definitely you. Unfortunately, the company doesn't allow family members to work in the same department, so I have to be modest. It seems this guy has some ambitions. After the two newcomers sat at their desks, Su Min immediately assigned tasks. She placed a stack of documents on Kim Taehyung's desk, saying, New guy, this is your task for today, yes. Then, she went to Park Yen Bin. But unlike with Kim Taehyung, she showed a gentle attitude and handed him just one set of documents. Hyun Bin, this is your task for today. Seeing this, Kim Taehyung disagreed and raised his hand, saying, Wait a minute, team leader. Why does my workload exceed Park Yen Bin's several times? She looked sternly, arms crossed. I'm the team leader. You're a team member. Follow the distribution. Any problem? Are you questioning my decision? Hearing that, he didn't bother to argue anymore. Fine, it's not easy to work as an employee. On the first day, I'm already underestimated. She turned away with disdain.
Also, don't overestimate yourself. Unfortunately, I'm the bright moon you'll never reach. This girl seems to have a massive self-delusion. She approached Hyun Bin, deliberately showing off her curves and hot body. If there's anything Hyun Bin doesn't understand, feel free to ask me. I'm not very familiar with this team leader position. She leaned in, her face excited. Which part? Hyun Bin, without much concern, glanced at her cleavage, inwardly impressed. This woman is something, very attractive. By six o'clock, he had completed his work and brought it to her attention. Team leader, the work is finished. While she was reviewing the report, he called her back. She looked at the documents, eyes wide open, mouth agape. The completion progress is too high. How can he be so capable? It seems you also have some real talent. She looked at him with a sharp gaze and then brought the pile of documents to Hyun Bin. Hyun Bin, I've helped you complete these tasks. Submit them to the supervisor for approval. Hearing this, he happily reached out to take them. Sure, thank you, team leader. He stood behind, bewildered and unsure of what to say. Unable to contain his anger, he stepped forward to question Su Min. What do you mean by this? I complete the task, and he gets all the credit. This Su Min woman felt no shame. Instead, she proudly smiled and then, with a mocking look, glanced at him before responding. An undergraduate like you should focus on improving. Many others didn't even have this opportunity. Hearing these shameless words from Su Min, he couldn't help but burst into laughter, asking her, Your brainwashing rhetoric is quite impressive. Aren't you afraid the director will find out? Su Min, far from feeling any fear, responded provocatively, Lovable. Do you still want to meet the director? Finding her lack of reason amusing, he no longer cared and turned away, saying, All right, I hope you can maintain this arrogant attitude. Shortly after, Su Min dispersed as well, leaving the company gate with that shameless man. The two walked intimately together, showing no regard for anyone around. He walked alongside Su Min, flattering her. Team Leader Min, thanks to you, everything is stable in my world today. Su Min, enjoying the flattery, responded, No need to be polite, just call me Su Min. He then took the opportunity to invite her. Su Min, would you like to have dinner with me? Without hesitation, Su Min agreed, thinking to herself, This wealthy old man has ten chances out of ten. Indeed, the two seemed well matched like a horse and carriage. After Su Min agreed to dinner, he excused himself, saying, I'll go get my car. Wait for me there. At the same time, he also left. On his way out, he encountered the two individuals who were like a horse and carriage. Su Min happened to stand right next to his car, making him feel unlucky. Really unfortunate. Why is she standing right next to my car? Despite her presence, Su Min seemed to have some connection with him. Even when it was time to leave, he couldn't avoid encountering her face. In any case, due to the circumstances, he had to approach her and say, Excuse me for a moment. Surprisingly, Su Min showed no sign of shame. Assuming he was attracted to her, she turned away dismissively, mocking, Ha, I knew it. Back in the office, arguing with me in front of everyone was just for show. Now that you have the chance, you come over here to talk to me. Her arrogant attitude and delusional words frightened him. He never expected her self-absorption to be so severe. Unable to contain herself, she continued to taunt him. Look at yourself. You think you can feast on a swan when you haven't even looked at your own appearance. It's laughable. I admit you had some ability. But unfortunately, you're still an undergrad with no money and no backing. In today's world, you simply have no advantage. Helpless, he sat there listening to her nonsense, wanting her to realize the issue and keep her distance. He didn't want to reach a point where it would be embarrassing, and he'd have to face the world without any dignity. I think you've misunderstood. She continued her taunts, trying to appear superior. Want to be a spare tire? I'm sorry, you haven't met the standards for being my spare tire. Seeing that she refused to listen to his advice, he decided not to waste more words on advising her. No matter what he did, it would be like pouring water on a duck's back. Right after that, he stepped forward, pulled his car out bluntly, and said to her, Step aside. You're blocking my way to get my car. Su Min, witnessing this series of actions, was astonished, feeling like she wanted to disappear. Fortunately for her, the other arrogant guy arrived just in time to rescue her. He drove his supercar over and couldn't resist making a sarcastic comment. Kim Tae-young, you're driving this wreck. How do you even manage to get around? 
Released from the encirclement by that guy, she continued to display her arrogant demeanor, stepping onto his car while saying, Let's go like this. Hyun Bin is taking me out to dinner. I can conveniently drop you off along the way. This is a rare opportunity to ride in a luxurious car, you know. She had just been embarrassed by him. But now, she continued to be arrogant and taunt him like this. Truly, she was a shameless woman. The other guy chimed in. If Su Min said that, I can give you a ride too. Ignoring their annoying remarks, he simply made their words fall on deaf ears. He decisively got on his steed, leaving them in surprise. Then, he revved the engine and sped past Su Min, causing her to lose balance and fall embarrassingly. People often say that evil begets evil. Su Min received her instant karma for being swift in getting her comeuppance. The radiant protagonist was certainly not easily bullied by these individuals. Seeing her fall flat on her face, the other guy immediately stepped down, expressing concern. Su Min, are you okay? Su Min replied, I'm fine. That jerk deserved it. Seeing Su Min's angry attitude, the other guy immediately joined in the anger. He's just jealous of me. Let it go. But to vent his frustration on you, I can't forgive him. After sitting up, Su Min quickly took out her mirror to inspect her $12,000 nose. Seeing it scratched, she became extremely angry, saying, Truly a pitiful man, unable to possess me. He wants to ruin what he can't have. He must be chased away. The delusions of this girl, Su Min, were truly getting out of hand. If not treated promptly, she might soon start thinking of herself as the queen of the world. After causing her to fall embarrassingly, he happily left on his steed, saying, let this couple continue their antics for another two days. The more arrogant they are, the more painful their fall will be. The next day at the company, Su Min, upon seeing him, couldn't resist seeking revenge. Kim Taehyung, buy coffee for all colleagues in the department. Do it now. He, of course, wasn't willing to easily tolerate this tricky woman, who was eight talls and half a caddy. He immediately responded, Why ask me to buy? Seeing his attitude, she furrowed her brows in anger. The new person buys coffee for colleagues. It's a rule. He immediately retorted, Oh, so why doesn't Park Hyun Bin buy? The guy Park Hyun Bin, who was protected by Su Min, didn't hesitate to sit smugly, mocking him without any fear. Su Min, countered by him, had no other argument left and said, You buy today, and he can buy tomorrow. What's the problem? Park Hyun Bin, that guy, couldn't resist butting in. Students are just students, they don't know anything about society, only focusing on studying, ignorant of social dynamics. Now, the teen leader is giving you an opportunity, or are you basically saying you don't want good relations with colleagues? This statement from Park Hyun Bin successfully influenced the remaining colleagues. Though not saying anything aloud, their eyes looked at him in a very different way. Even though unspoken, the pressure was already mounting on him. Immediately after, he turned to address the two of them. Well, both of you are great. Park Hyun Bin, not knowing what's good or bad, continued to approach him, feigning concern, but actually threatening him. Kim Tae Young, don't act strangely in front of me. I have connections. Whether you can stay after the internship is up to me. You didn't bother staying in this miserable place. Just reaching the end of the internship would be enough to help you graduate. With your capabilities, why stay and work in this filthy place full of flies and mosquitoes? However, you still asked him with a disdainful expression. Oh, what happens next? Seeing that you seem to have been subdued, these two became even more arrogant. They grinned maliciously and said to you, If you become my subordinate, I might consider letting you stay here. Su Min couldn't resist chiming in. Hyun Bin, you're treating him too well. Kim Tae Young should quickly say thank you. Unperturbed, you smile back at the horse-faced do. I think he should be the one saying thank you to me. Just this remark surprised and dumbfounded them. You didn't stop there and continued speaking, looking at them with a scornful gaze. I'm concerned about the well-being of my junior. That's why I advised him to give up such thoughts. Don't you think you should thank me? Upon hearing these words, the name Hyun Bin completely lost his composure. What did you just say? He was furious and completely oblivious to the working environment around him, which was the workplace. Unfazed, you responded with a smile. I'm speaking the truth. As a student, I don't have money. But after I get my salary, I'll definitely treat everyone to coffee. So let Hyun Bin pay this time. With as much money as Hyun Bin has, 
it's not just a department. Even people in the company can be treated, right? Afterward, Hyun Bin regained his composure, adjusted his tone, and hesitantly replied, Um, the company is big, with a thousand people. Of course I can treat them. I'm not you. Upon hearing his response, you calmly replied, So I'd like a cup of mocha as a thank you. This completely annoyed Hyun Bin, but there was nothing he could do. He could only grit his teeth in frustration, saying, You. Seeing Hyun Bin's anger, Su Min approached cheerfully and said, Thanks, Hyun Bin. Only someone as generous as you could make friends, unlike someone else, who is both poor and doesn't understand office etiquette. Other colleagues chimed in with thanks. Thank you, Hyun Bin. The team leader is right. After receiving these expressions of gratitude, Hyun Bin seemed to have to concede. Then, reluctantly, he said, Thank you, everyone. Treating everyone to coffee is my honor. Taking advantage of the situation, you added, That's great. From now on, let Hyun Bin cover all the coffee expenses. Reluctantly accepting, Hyun Bin had no other choice, only able to mutter curses silently in his heart. Wretched fellow. To your surprise, at this unexpected moment, Hyun Bin's father appeared. He had been holding back his frustration until now, and upon seeing his father's arrival, he gleefully pointed at you, signaling his father. This kid bullied me. The dynamics between these two father-son figures were truly sharp. Without uttering a word, the elder father understood his son's intentions, smiling to reassure him. Both of them then exchanged a sly look, and the elderly man began plotting revenge for his son. Attention, everyone. There's an important matter. Su Min, upon seeing Hyun Bin's father, immediately asserted her authority over the remaining employees. The manager is here. Get an order. Once everything was settled, the elderly man continued to address the issue he was discussing. We've just received a project worth 8 million, and they're demanding a proposal within three days. Whoever gets their proposal approved will receive a bonus of 80 million. Time is tight, and the task is crucial. Quickly form groups and work on the proposal. Pay attention when selecting team members. They must be cooperative. This elderly man seemed to have a dark sense of humor, with each word carrying its own poison. His words were almost implying that you lacked a spirit of teamwork. The employees present here promptly responded with a collective yes after hearing the elderly man's instructions. Everyone quickly formed into groups, and of course, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces ended up in the same team. You seem to have anticipated the outcome, realizing that you wouldn't be chosen by anyone in this office, and you didn't feel particularly surprised. Observing that nobody picked you, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces couldn't resist mocking. Ha ha! No one wants to be in a group with Kim Taehyung. If they dared to taunt you like that, you certainly didn't hold back in responding. That's fine. What's the problem? You reply with an indifferent attitude, displaying no hint of fear. Seeing you standing alone, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces thought you wouldn't achieve anything and walked away, continuing to mock you. Haha, <laughs> keep being arrogant. Let's see how many days you can keep smiling. As time passed, everyone in the office was enthusiastically discussing the newly assigned project. In stark contrast, you remained entirely unbothered, casually eating at your desk, seemingly unaffected by the ticking clock. Even when it was time to finish work, you stayed behind for discussions, in an extremely stressful atmosphere, where no one dared to leave the office except for you. You paid no attention to the time, indifferent to everyone's efforts to continue working. Regardless of whether others stayed to work, you didn't care. Alone and undisturbed, you calmly left the office. The three-day deadline had passed, and you felt incredibly relaxed, without a trace of stress. You were able to flawlessly complete the plan, and after updating it, you smiled contentedly, saying, Done. With a third-level intellect, executing this plan was as easy as pie. No need to waste time lying around the office, racking my brain. With your protagonist-level intelligence, you effortlessly finished the plan in the blink of an eye, leaving many in awe. Seeing you in such a cheerful and playful mood, Su Min felt extremely uncomfortable. He hasn't worked overtime for three days, and the meeting is about to start in an hour. Why is he still so relaxed? As a dull and insignificant supporting character, how could she understand the thoughts of the story's main character? This girl was just preparing to receive bitterness from you. The name Hyun Bin remained confident in his own abilities, and witnessing your relaxed demeanor, he expressed his confidence. Look at his appearance. He's probably lazy again. 
Nothing surprising. Despite hearing these mocking words, you paid them no mind. Indifferently, you turned away to address your concerns in the restroom. Su Min, feeling extremely anxious, couldn't contain her curiosity about your mysterious actions, sneakily peering at your computer screen. The surprise you had prepared for her turned out to be unexpectedly significant. Seeing the plant you had prepared, she was greatly astonished. This. Hyun Bin noticed Su Min's strange reaction and couldn't help but ask, What's wrong? She hesitated for a moment before responding with an anxious tone. Your plan is very professional, the product positioning is precise, and the perspective is fresh, even better than the plans of our three teams. I can't believe this was done in just three days. Hearing Su Min's words, Hyun Bin began to feel concerned, unable to believe his eyes for a moment. What? He must have paid someone to do it. Su Min, frightened by the comprehensive plan, was so terrified that she broke into a cold sweat, completely disregarding whether you or someone else had created the plan. This is not the focus. The meeting is approaching, and we absolutely cannot let him present the report. Just as she was about to have ill intentions toward your plan, you suddenly entered and spoke, startling her. Is there something, team leader? Seeing that you had caught her standing next to your computer, Su Min had to cover up. The report will start in half an hour, and the whole department is busy. You have some free time, so why not head to the meeting room and tidy up a bit? This girl, Su Min, is truly a venomous snake. It's unbelievable that she came up with such a cunning plan. You, of course, have to agree with her. Watching you walk away, Su Min felt like a flag had been planted in her heart, sensing that the time was right. Ha ha, Kim Tae Young. My team is very pleased to accept your proposal. It's really surprising that she could swallow this plan. It seems like she's not afraid of getting stuck. Clearly, she told you to go to meeting room A for cleanup, but now the meeting is taking place in meeting room B. This girl is indeed an extremely, extremely venomous snake. The meeting immediately began. Hyun Bin, right after stealing your plan, confidently stood in front of everyone to present. The Pod Urban Development Model. Park-oriented development is thriving. Following the ecological infrastructure direction, such as the park and hill water system, this model can support and promote new consumption, the new consumption hotspot in education, and upgrade the surrounding areas. While he was passionately presenting, suddenly your name appeared on the slide, making him startle. The cunning mouse immediately flipped to the previous page to avoid others noticing that he had stolen your plan. Seeing that everyone remained completely unaware, he started silently celebrating in his mind. Too close, luckily no one has seen anything. Director Ah and his father were joyfully discussing his presentation. Very good, very good. This plan is much better than the others. Your employee has great potential. Upon hearing his son being praised, the old man was secretly pleased. That's too much praise. If Director Ah is satisfied with the project, that's good enough. Feeling the director's approval, he happily smiled and said, well, I graduated from MIT, so I must have the competence to match the school. Su Min also chimed in with flattery. Hyun Bin, I didn't expect you to have such outstanding academic achievements. You're amazing. Director Ah, upon hearing the prestigious university's name, praised him. So, you're a talented student from MIT. With such a perfect plan, I have no suggestions for any modifications. Seeing his son being praised like that, the old man felt as if he had blossomed. Looking at his son with a secretly satisfied smile, he prays, Success, my son. You did very well. The old man then presented the contract and said, If that's the case, can we sign this contract? Director Mang is very pleased with this plan, and there's no reason to refuse. No issues. The cunning old man, upon seeing Director Ah preparing to sign, revealed his malicious intentions. With this contract in hand, the process of my promotion to director becomes simple. The do with the faces of an ox and a horse, upon witnessing this, harbored their own calculating thoughts. The 800,000 reward, I can pay off the remaining balance for the Rolex. Hyun Bin and I can split it, each getting 400,000. Immediately go buy the new spring collection of Chanel handbags. Just when this group was feeling delighted, envisioning a bright future ahead, suddenly you burst in and shattered their dreams, saying, stealing someone else's plan. You really have no shame. The old man, upon seeing you appear, was extremely shocked, saying, Kim Taehyung. Director Ah, after hearing your words, 
also felt extremely surprised, completely unaware of what was happening. Upon seeing you enter, that guy Hinam Ben immediately felt uneasy and singled his father, dad, quickly kicked Kim Taedyong out. The old man instantly grasped the situation, changing his angry tone to scold you. Nonsense, such an important meeting, and you dare to come late, moreover, causing a disturbance when signing the contract. Get out for me quickly. Don't think leaving the room will solve everything. After signing the contract, I'll settle the score with you. Feeling the old man's irrational speech, you promptly exposed the truth. Late. If you hadn't tricked me into meeting in room A, then I would be the one signing the contract now, right? You furrowed your brows, turning to reveal the true faces of the duo, with the faces of an ox and a horse. Su Min, Hyun Bin, you stole my plan and dare not admit it. Seeing that everything was about to be exposed, the old man couldn't contain his anger any longer and burst out loudly. The intern, shut your mouth for me. Director Ah, standing nearby, completely puzzled by the situation, turned to ask the old man, what is he talking about? The old man still didn't lower his voice. On the contrary, he spoke even louder. The team leader's capability, everyone can see it. Why steal his plan and falsely accuse a colleague? Immediately pack up and leave right now. You completely ignored the old man's words and immediately approached the thieving Hyun Bin step by step. Park Hyun Bin, do you dare to open page 11 for everyone to see who signed it? Seeing you approaching more and more, Hyun Bin became extremely anxious, to the point of sweating profusely, and he began to stammer. Well, why should I open the page? At this moment, Su Min suddenly rushed forward, wanting to reverse the situation. Listen to me, everyone. Here's the thing. When I was discussing the plan with everyone that day, Kim Taehyung unexpectedly made a constructive comment, so I recorded it. I also wrote down this plan under his name, considering it a face-saving gesture for him. Now, he wants to use this as evidence, claiming that we chose his plan. Unexpectedly, this cunning woman could spin such a wild story and turn the situation around. It's truly admirable. Hyun Bin, seeing Su Min launching this counterattack, seemed to regain his smug demeanor. People around. Right after hearing the story woven by Su Min herself, paid no attention to how the situation unfolded. They immediately unleashed sarcastic remarks at you. Kim Taehyung has been leaving work on time for the past three days. We haven't seen him working overtime at all. Can he really come up with such a good plan? Who would believe that? Unexpectedly, he is not only lazy, but also wants to snatch the hard-earned achievements of his colleagues. These people are truly going too far. Without even knowing the whole situation, they spoke harshly to you. Even though they criticized you based on a story fabricated by them to shift blame onto you, you showed no concern. Raising an eyebrow, you said, I must say, the teen leader does have some urgent crisis management skills to come up with such a story. But my computer still has several draft plans. How will teen leader Min handle this? Hearing this daring move from you, Su Min was completely helpless and didn't know how to justify herself standing silent as if struck by lightning. Suddenly, the cunning old man cracked a wicked smile. Then, he pretended to be shocked and shouted loudly to attract everyone's attention. I lost my watch. After that, he turned his accusing finger towards you. Kim Taehyung, are you the thief? Hearing the old man accusing you like that, you were momentarily speechless. He didn't give you a chance to think. He searched your seat, and with his son Hyun Bin acting in perfect harmony, immediately checked your belongings, saying, Yes, manager. Unexpectedly, he found the old man's watch right there in your place. Found it at Kim Taegyung's place. It indeed was stolen by him. This family is indeed sly. They seem determined to destroy your reputation. After being trapped in such a tricky situation, you now truly realize the cunning nature of this father and son. Indeed, their cunningness reaches extraordinary levels. Playing games like this and still managing to succeed deserves a salute. Even though you find yourself in this awkward situation, you can't help but praise. Diverting attention like that. You guys sure know how to play. The reaction was quite something. While you and Su Min were talking, that cunning old man discreetly removed his watch and handed it to his son, Hyun Bin, pretending to look for it at your place. Even if someone were to figure it out now, it wouldn't make a difference. Like father, like son. The satisfaction on the faces of these two is uncanny. The old manager proudly displayed a smug expression, looking at you with a scornful smirk. The evidence is clear. What else can you refute? 
but because I am a good person. If you kneel down and beg me, I won't involve the police. However, termination is inevitable. Is it really being a good person, or is it just to avoid revealing that his worthless son stole your plan? Saying such things without feeling any shame at all. The whole group of employees had no idea about the right or wrong, the beginning or the end of the story. They stuck their noses in and ridiculed you. No mercy from the manager. We should report to the police and fine him. It's terrifying to have people like this as teammates. Who knows when something will be stolen? You sat there listening to the weak criticism from those people. The fire of anger burned fiercely within you. Clearly, you were the victim. So why should you endure such contemptuous words from them? Your eyes at this moment were filled with resentment, staring intensely at the cunning old man. The gaze seemed capable of killing him right there. Seeing the sharp look you directed at him, the old man immediately panicked, no longer daring to pretend. He shouted loudly, Get out! Aren't you supposed to protect? Drag this person out! The two security guards, upon receiving the order, immediately rushed forward, ready to use force on you. Yes, boss. This old man then crossed his arms and stood there looking extremely pleased, thinking that this threat was about to be resolved. Just as the two guards were about to approach you, a shocking voice rang out suddenly, Stop! Both security guards immediately looked bewildered but had to halt according to the command. Seeing their astonished expressions, it seemed that the person about to appear played a crucial role in this matter. A graceful lady entered, exuding an extremely elegant appearance. Immediately, both sides stood very seriously to welcome her. She was the director's secretary. The old man, upon seeing the newcomer as the director's secretary, eagerly greeted her, as if a dog had found its owner. Why are you here? Surprisingly, it didn't stop there. Following the secretary was the director, with an imposing aura that made everyone tremble with fear. The old man instantly dared not show arrogance anymore, humbling himself like a dog in front of the female director. He approached with deference. Oh my, why did the director come without saying a word? Let me welcome you. The director paid no attention to this scum, not even sparing a glance. The female secretary, on behalf of the director, replied, The director will come when it's time. Her response was a strong blow to the old man's face, making it clear that no one dared to make a fuss. The old man could only try to please the director, quickly bring a chair here, and you, make my Westlake Longing tea promptly. Director Ah, upon seeing the female director's arrival, immediately stood up to greet her. Boss Yoon, greetings. I am from Vin Holmes Real Estate Development Company. It is truly an honor to meet you. The secretary, on behalf of the director, replied, I apologize, but the director has urgent matters to attend to. The female director completely ignored these individuals, not sparing them a glance, focusing her attention solely on him. She gradually approached him. The old man, after preparing the scene, cheerfully spoke, The tea is ready. Please have a seat. By the way, I just negotiated a large project worth $8 million with Director Ah, and I'm about to inform the boss. He remained joyous, welcoming the female director without noticing the current situation had been reversed. He then confidently took the seat prepared for the director. The female director beside him graciously presented the tea, saying, Please enjoy your tea. He responded with authority. Yes. The other four individuals witnessed this scene as if turned to stone standing still for a few seconds, utterly disbelieving their eyes. Why was someone who had been bullied like this, now sitting confidently in the director's chair and being treated with such respect? He casually enjoyed sipping his tea, complaining nonchalantly, the tea is too hot. Upon hearing his complaint, the female director suddenly became hesitant, bowing slightly in apology. I'm sorry, let me blow on it for you. Director Yoon then took his tea, incessantly blowing on it. The scene appeared quite enchanting. Even just watching it was pleasing. Another surprise followed. The malicious bunch, who had criticized him earlier, now looked terrified, gaping in disbelief. What's happening? Am I dreaming? Those submissive employees who had criticized him just moments ago were now terrified, wide-eyed. It was unexpected that he held such authority. I must not be daydreaming. This is... On his side, after blowing on his tea, the female director... Concerned, asked, is the temperature suitable now? Enjoying his tea, he replied cheerfully, perfect, thank you. Pleased with his satisfaction, Director Yoon said, just enjoy your tea, I'll take care of this. 
He then turned to his secretary, signaling her to handle the situation. Following that, the female secretary also grasped her director's intention and immediately turned to interrogate the cunning old man. See Hai Ran. See Hai Ran, do you know where you went wrong? Seeing the secretary's attitude and demeanor, the old man felt threatened and seemed on the verge of wetting himself, as if wanting to relieve himself in his pants. I, I, Kim tae Young, was he arranged by the director. Before the old man could discern the details of the situation, an employee approached the female secretary and whispered, Secretary C. Famit. The secretary took hold of the pile of documents, then threw them directly at the old man, saying, This is the draft of the plan found at Kim tae Young's place. Take a look for yourself. The old man clutched the trembling stack of documents, kneeling down in fear and stammering. Kim tae Young made the plan. I wrongly accused him. The meek group of employees, upon learning the truth, looked stunned and realized they had blamed the wrong person. After hearing the old man's confession, the female secretary declared, colluding with subordinates, embezzling others' hard work, abusing authority to favor Su Min, promoted Su Min, unqualified, to teen leader, affecting department efficiency, violating company regulations, secretly placing her son in the department, behind the company's back, he has done quite a lot, hasn't he? Every word uttered by the female secretary felt like a deep-cutting knife into the souls of these three individuals. All truths had been laid bare, and they could no longer maintain their arrogance, only experiencing an overwhelming sense of fear. The remaining employees, upon hearing this truth, couldn't escape their astonishment. What? All of this was orchestrated by the management. The female secretary approached the old man, who was still kneeling, and said, Now that you've offended Boss John, your luck has run out. Upon hearing the name Boss John, the old man was bewildered, thinking he must have misheard, and spoke up. Wait, Boss John. The secretary looked towards the one sitting confidently in the chair and said, Boss John, who invested 500 million in the company, is now the largest shareholder, namely Kim Tahyam. Through the secretary's words, it became clear why he held such favor in the company and received such respect from Director Yoon. His face at this moment appeared remarkably triumphant, reveling in the surprise on their faces. The other three, upon learning his true identity, felt as if their mouths were about to bleed and die on the spot. How, how could this be? He can't possibly be Boss John. They say that karma often catches up with the wicked, and now they were tasting the bitterness of life. This shock was truly too immense for them, and they found it difficult to come to terms with it in an instant. After all the things the old man had done to him, Upon learning his true identity, he seemed on the brink of madness. The female secretary immediately declared loudly, Si Hai Ran, Su Min, Hyun Bin, dismiss them right here. The old man, shocked by this revelation, and now facing termination, grabbed his head and screamed, No. The guy named Park Hyun Bin, realizing the consequences, immediately shifted all blame onto Su Min, looking at her with a bitter gaze. It's all because of this shameless woman. He then turned to confront Su Min directly. You shameless person, you even have a vague relationship with my father, and you came to the hotel with me. Upon hearing him speak like that, Su Min didn't hesitate to spill the truth. What did you just say? I'm the one suffering the most here. I thought you were arranged by the director. Turns out you're just the son of an owner. You pretended to be wealthy for what? The once united couple was now betraying each other. The showdown of the three antagonists unfolded immediately. All three engaged in a chaotic brawl, pulling hair, hitting relentlessly, and constantly blaming each other. Shameless person, you dare to seduce my son. While mom is working hard at home, dad is fooling around with subordinates at the office. Dare to hit me? This troublemaker and this shameless woman just die already. You dare to hit me? I'll talk to your wife. This series of chaotic scenes was truly embarrassing. The truth is always heartbreaking, but who would have expected it to lead to a family brawl like this? The buffalo-headed horse-faced duo, along with the cunning old man, caused such disorder trying to escape the office that the secretary could no longer bear it. She immediately called the security. Shut up. Security, take these three away. As the two security guards entered, all three individuals were dragged away, screaming and shouting incessantly on the ground. The oblivious group of employees, upon learning the true identity of the man, immediately changed their attitude. They bowed and apologized loudly. Director Jun, 
I apologize for my ignorance. It's all Si Hai Ran who deceived us. I've never liked Su Min. Thank you, Director Jian, for helping me vent my anger. I've always been on Director Jun's side. Indeed, these employees were like turning a pancake, swift in changing sides. Without hesitation, they shifted all blame onto others, leaving themselves a path for advancement. Their mouths continued to flatter the man, resolving all matters smoothly. The female director turned gently to ask him, Director Jun, are you satisfied with this outcome? He looked at the three being dragged away like discarded objects and smiled contentedly. It's okay. Let it be like this. But in the future, if your company hires new people, pay attention and carefully evaluate their character. Truly, a person with money speaks and carries oneself differently. Now hearing him speak, no one would think he was just an ordinary employee. The father and son do still clung to hope, unwilling to abandon their future in such a pathetic manner. Tears streamed down, hands grasping onto the floor, desperate to stay in this place. As he observed their pitiful state, a sense of satisfaction washed over in him. The female director then gently lowered herself and said to him, Before, I wanted to appoint you as the director, but you refuse. Now that you're infuriated, I find it amusing. Hearing these words, he chuckled, Ha ha, I am a humble person. With everything resolved smoothly, his identity now revealed, he no longer needed to hide. He confidently turned his back and walked away. The female director, seeing him leave, gracefully followed, saying, Kim Tae-hinung, do you remember when I mentioned finding a professional team? Their research has made significant progress, and I'd like to show you. He replied with a decisive yes. The scene at that moment was unknown to those outside. The woman walking behind him was, in fact, the director. The other employees, witnessing the unfolding scene, found it hard to believe their eyes. Am I not seeing things? The legendary powerful female CEO has a vulnerable side. Immediately. You and the female director walked into her beautiful office. As you stepped inside, you couldn't help but observe the surroundings. The luxurious office prompted you to exclaim, Your office is truly extravagant. Now, the female director seemed like just another colleague. As she entered the room, she sat at her desk, working excellently. Being both a beauty and a director, her presence was unmatched. While continuously typing on the computer, she spoke, Most of my time is spent at the tech company. It's been a while since I came here. This is our latest achievement. The female director was very confident in this accomplishment and wanted to show you. You quickly approached her to admire it. As you looked at the computer screen, a sense of hesitation came over you. Oh, I don't understand, but it looks fantastic. All the information consisted of figures and codes, none of which you understood. Clearly, you had no need for such things. Handsome on the outside, wealthy on the inside. Why bother with these details? To remedy the confusion about the financial figures, even though you had no understanding of the data, you, with nothing but money to offer, immediately withdrew your phone and transferred 500 million. Overall, well done. I'll invest another 500 million for you, Yang Yun. The female director, sitting beside you, was astonished by your decisive money transfer, seeing your monetary indulgence as quite remarkable. Her favorable impression increased by 10%. For you, 500 million was like a fallen leaf or a shed hair from a cow. It couldn't go on like this for long. Yang Yun immediately struggled to stand up. Seeing her trying to move despite her numb legs, you step forward to offer help. Your dress is torn. Seeing your concern, Yang Yun signaled that it was unnecessary to speak. It's okay, I have a dressing room where I can change into another outfit. Both of you then entered Yang Yun's luxurious dressing room. As you stepped in, your amazement couldn't be contained. Oh my, there's even a luxurious dressing room in the office. Being poor really limits my imagination. You toured inside, suddenly spotting a beautiful dress and couldn't help but exclaim, This dress is gorgeous. Seeing your admiration for the dress, Yang Yun immediately chose it to drape over her exquisite figure. I'll change quickly. Please wait a moment. You waiting outside immediately agreed, Sure. You felt quite pleased seeing the increased favorable impression. Suddenly, it increases so much. Indeed, trying to spend money is the key to romantic words. Shortly after, Yang Yun emerged, wearing the splendid outfit you had praised earlier. Yang Yun stepped out like a goddess with a radiant aura. I'm done changing, Kim Tae-young. Would you like to join me for dinner? 
You gasped in astonishment at what you were witnessing, your two eyes widening in surprise. Oh, it's this dress, you remarked. The beautiful Yang Yun smiled mysteriously, her face adorned with porcelain white skin, blood red lips, and amber colored eyes that enhanced her beauty. Truly, she lived up to the reputation of a high class beauty. Walking alongside Yang Yun, you both strode down the corridor with gracefully elongated legs. Yang Yun, commanding as a chairwoman, gave orders to her secretary with an imposing tone to the Tu Long Sun restaurant. The secretary promptly bowed, responding, Certainly, chairwoman. The company's employees were even more bewildered, especially the male staff. Everyone gasped, finding it hard to believe what they were seeing. Oh my, did you see that? The chairwoman and Kim Taeyong stayed in the office for a while and changed into different outfits. This old man really has crazy ideas, his mind is too dark. This is the first time seeing the chairwoman dressed so alluringly. Have you satisfied your curiosity now? A male employee appeared incredulous. Couldn't it be? No, I don't believe it. Yet, it was exactly as they were seeing. There was no room for doubt when witnessing the stunning transformation of the beautiful Yang Yun. The male employees now seemed as if the whole world were collapsing. They all slumped to the ground, facing the undeniable truth. Kim Taehyung has finished his meal. I'll take him to see my proud achievement. What kind of achievement could be so boastworthy like that? You and Yang Yun, both smiling, exchanged words, and left. You didn't forget to respond. Sure, I feel like I should delve deeper next time. Two individuals, one male and one female, sat facing each other in an upscale restaurant under the vibrant city lights. The scene was incredibly romantic. One might expect sweet conversations, but these two were discussing work matters. It sounded quite somber. I've reviewed that plan. It's fantastic. I can't believe this is the first time you've done such work. You responded with your irresistibly handsome face, breaking into a genuinely bright smile. Oh my goodness, that handsome and deadly smile. Who could resist that? It's okay, this task is relatively simple. Indeed, it was straightforward for someone with a third-tier intellect like yours. Others might find it challenging. Yang Yun happily cut a piece of steak, preparing to put it in her mouth, but her lips still formed a gentle smile, and her face blushed slightly. Her favorability increased by an additional 15%, now standing at 77%. It seemed that she was becoming more satisfied with you day by day. Raindrops were gradually falling in the quiet space, and finally the night had set in. Jai Wan was taking a shower and simultaneously video calling Yang Yun. Yang Yun truly appreciated him. I never expected his work capabilities to be this good. Moreover, always maintaining composure and elegance. It's enchanting, isn't it? Leaning on the bathtub, Jai Wan remarked, So, in the end, our arrogant CEO has been moved. After returning home, Yang Yun sat on the bed, peeling off the layers of stockings clinging to her milky white legs. She continuously gazed at her phone. I also don't know about Kim Ji Won's situation. Yang Yun winked, smiling brightly, and signaled, Isn't tomorrow the day you fly to Japan? Why not go to bed early? Or are you too excited to sleep, perhaps accompanying your high school friend? Hearing that, Jai Won blushed to the point where her face turned deep red, hastily refuting, What are you talking about? He and I are just normal classmates. Yang Yun teased, Normal classmates who help you out in such a big way. Don't forget, you can consider it as selling yourself to him. These two girls were like mischievous cats, poking and prodding at each other. One might wonder if their relationship would become as contrived as Jisoo's with Shin Hai, only realizing it was a trap once they fell into the web of emotions with him. Would their relationship turn out to be as fake? Jai Won submerged herself in the water, her cheeks continuously blushing avoiding the conversation. I won't talk to you anymore. I need to go to sleep. On the other end, Yang Yun chuckled happily. Ha ha, sweet dreams. Jo Won's slender, milky white legs stepped out of the bathtub, water droplets falling. She sat on the bathtub recalling the image of him, feeling an undeniable joy. Traveling abroad with Kim Taehyung always feels like a date. Oh my, indeed, love is never ordinary. But J. Wan's thoughts seemed very much like those of an innocent teenage girl. So cute. The next morning, in a tall building, an old man with a cunning face was sitting arrogantly on a chair. Accompanying him was a beautiful young girl, massaging his legs. 
Why did the old man's face seem so familiar? A person walked in respectfully and announced, Chairman Kamade, the capital is ready. Upon hearing this, the old man asked, How much? The man bowed his head, but his eyes remained lifted to observe the old man's reaction. Enough for you to buy anything you want at the auction next week. He confidently stated, Smart move, getting humiliated by him now would be embarrassing. Better straighten up. The old man, satisfied with the response, remarked, Hmm, that arrogant foreigner. Jung, he added, he has already booked a flight quite daring. He dared to offend the Kamade financial conglomerate, humiliated him at the previous auction. And then, who humiliated whom at that auction? Well, we'll find out soon enough. The old man looked at his bull-headed horse-faced bodyguards and stated firmly, let him stay here permanently. Ten days later, as the plane soared through the sky, a news alert popped up a minute ago. Two days after the largest auction, held once every four years in Japan, officially opens. This auction also attracts the attention of collectors worldwide. He glanced at G1, saying, buying the ticket was too late. Almost didn't make it. Luckily, there were still seats in economy class. Noticing him in this handsome blue shirt was quite captivating. Detecting something off in Ji Won's expression, he immediately inquired with concern. What's wrong, Kim Ji Won? Ji Won looked up at him with a deeply concerned expression, excited but also tense. Excited because I can see extremely valuable artifacts, and tense because I heard Jung. He works for the Kamade Financial Conglomerate, which is very famous in Japan. When he challenged you back then, it surely wasn't with good intentions. If you lose in the auction, I'm afraid he'll. Before J1 could finish her sentence, he reassured her, It's okay. Whether there's a bet with him or not, I will still buy the cultural relics of Hoogu. Hearing his words, J1 gradually felt more at ease and responded with an affirmative sound. While the two were happily comforting each other, a little boy appeared, shouting, Ultraman attack! The little guy even had a missing front tooth, which added a touch of humor. Just as they were enjoying the moment, the boy accidentally bumped into Ji Won, who was sitting and using her phone. Did this kid unintentionally collide with the love goddess? The man sitting in front looked at the boy with a stern expression. The boy quickly jumped behind Ji Won and pushed her forward. He seemed to be overly excited. This shove startled Ji Won, making her jump in surprise. Could this be the way kids express affection? teasing and playing pranks on the person they like. Jai Won turned around and gently said, Little friend, kicking the back of the chair is not appropriate. Nevertheless, the boy continued kicking persistently. Apparently, this kid wasn't one to heave others' words. The blushing boy exclaimed, Hey, you're so beautiful. Let me see that thing of yours. Hearing this, Jai Won couldn't believe her ears. Are you, are you saying inappropriate things? This little boy so young yet uttering such vulgar words, reached a level of perversion. It seemed there was no point in trying to reason with him. A direct confrontation might be the best way to put an end to this behavior. The boy even went as far as running up and knocking the phone out of G1's hand, causing it to fall to the ground. Otherwise, that's it. This unexpected action left both him and G1 astonished. Such audacity. He was about to stand up to teach the boy a lesson. You little rascal. But Jai Won restrained him. Let it go. Kids don't understand these things. It's baffling how a kid this big could still lack understanding. He sat down in silence for a moment, then expressed his thoughts. You're overly kind. When mischievous children go undisciplined, they become even more frightening as they grow up. Ji Won, upon hearing this, fell into a silent contemplation with a solemn expression. The troublesome kid, undeterred, continued running around causing chaos, shouting, Ultraman attack. This prompted the man sitting nearby to hurriedly cover his ears. Ignoring everyone, the mischievous kid deliberately reached for G1's wans dress and pulled on it, causing her to startle and drop her phone. Hindered by the dress, she stumbled, and the dress tore along with a loud rip. The little troublemaker indeed lived up to his name. Jai Wan exclaimed, My dress. Unable to tolerate it any longer, she stood up and shouted, You little rascal. The mischievous kid, who had been quite bold moments ago, now sat on the ground pretending to cry and scream. Ouch, it hurts. His mother rushed over, witnessing the scene. She shouted, What happened to my child? Who bullied my child? Like mother, like child. This case perfectly fit the proverb. 
A naughty child is the mother's fault. A mischievous grandchild is the grandmother's fault. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.